boys and girls, it's Miss Galino. And today what we're going to do is focus on structure. I have a writing piece that I'm going to be reading to you by a published author. And his name is Ralph Fletcher. And as I read a piece of his memoir, I want you to think about the different structures that best fit his writing piece. Remember, it could be a snapshot structure, which is a collection of small moments around a theme, one specific theme. It could also be possibly a series of events, which is a collection of chronological events. So it must be in order, or it could be a circle structure, a journey brought you home again. So as I'm reading this, I want you to think about which structure did Ralph Fletcher choose? And a little bit about Ralph Fletcher. He's an American writer and poet, and he wrote a book called Marshfield Dreams when I was a kid. And it's a memoir that covers his life from birth to age 13, when his family moved from Marshfield, Massachusetts to Chicago. Now, he is the oldest of nine. So pretty big family. I also want you to remember that this is real life. This is a memoir. So here's a picture of his book that I also put in the PowerPoint, Marshfield Dreams. And here is a portion of his memoir that I'm going to read aloud. And again, I want you to be focusing on what type of structure the memoir is and also what type of elements are in his writing piece. When the snow melted in early March, mom put the little kids in the stroller and took us outside. We played a game called Signs of Spring. Mom awarded points to any one of us who noticed buds on the bushes, a few small blades of grass, or maybe a flower named a crocalcus pushing up through the muddy dirt. My world on Acorn Street seemed perfect, complete, but certain things began to happen that made me aware of another bigger world. The Pope died, Mom said one morning at breakfast. Who's the Pope, I asked. He was the head of the Catholic Church, she explained. He was the holiest man on the earth. I knew one thing for sure. So notice over here. I really like the way he wrote that. He's already thinking about letting us understand what he's thinking. The Pope would go straight up to heaven. That night, I stood at my bedroom window, hoping to see the silvery soul of the Pope rising from the earth. The next afternoon, Jimmy and I took a hike in the woods. We reached an old stone wall, scrambled over it, and made it a right turn. Sunlight filtered through the trees and danced along the path. This way, Jimmy said, pointing. I followed him. The air turned warm and heavy, and the ground felt spongy, like we were near a swamp. I smelled the sour odor of skunk cabbage, but Jimmy kept going, pushing through thick brush. It seemed like we were in the deepest, wildest part of the forest, and all of a sudden we stepped onto grass, somebody's yard. We saw two old people staring at us, a man and a woman. The man waved us over. Come here, he called. We walked carefully over the lawn to the brick patio. There was a neat row of rose bushes and a table set with a bowl of red grapes, a plate of sliced cheese, fancy crackers, and a bottle of wine. Hello there, the woman said in a nice voice. I'm Sophie Pratt. Are you from around here? Kind of, I said. We couldn't have been far from our home, but the smooth lawn and rose bushes made it seem like a whole different neighborhood. What are your names? I'm Ralph. Jimmy, what's your last name? 
Fletcher. The Fletchers, Sophie Pratt, gave us a huge grin. We don't live but six houses away. My eyes wandered over to the grill. A whiff of burning charcoal grazed past my nose, carrying it with it a sweet smell. My stomach growled. Mr. Pratt lifted the hood of the grill. Leaning forward, I saw two rows of clams cooking a few inches above the charcoal. I also saw what smells so good, a little crock of melted butter. So can you just imagine right now being there at the Pratt's house and what you see and what you smell and what Ralph is thinking? Best way to cook them, the man explained. Heat makes them open right up. Want to try one? Jimmy shook his head. But I figured, why not? We weren't supposed to accept food from strangers, but these old people were neighbors. Mr. Pratt took one of the clams off the grill, lifted it from its shell, dunked it into the pot of melted butter, and popped it into my mouth. How is that, dear? Sophie Pratt asked. Great, I said, nodding. It was so delicious, I ate two more. Seeing my reaction, Jimmy ate a couple clams, too. We left a little while later, promising to come back and visit soon. But I didn't see them until a month later. It was just another morning until Lani came running in from outside. Come on, she yelled, emergency. What? I started pulling on my sneakers. Some kind of bomb fell in the Pratt's front yard. A bomb? We sprinted down to the Pratt's house. And there were police cars and lots of strange men I'd never seen before. Some were yelling, stand back, stand back. I saw an ugly hole maybe five feet long and three feet wide in the middle of the Pratt's front lawn. Water was gushing out, making pools on the grass, spilling onto the sidewalk and streaming down one side of Acorn Street. I spotted Sophie Pratt standing near the hall. She was crying with her husband beside her. Two policemen were talking to them. I saw Mr. Fishman, the father of my friend Steve. What happened? I asked him. Was it a bomb? So notice again how visual, how this writer, Ralph Fletcher, just draws you right in and like plops you in the middle of Acorn Street and right in front of the Pratt's house again. So that's what you're going to try to do with your memoir as well. I don't think so, he shook his head. A bomb would have ripped a much bigger hole than that. Somebody said it was part of an airplane that fell off. Somebody else said it might be a dummy bomb. A dummy bomb? I'd never heard of such a thing. He shrugged. Could be some kind of military gadget, maybe a test that went wrong. There are lots of rumors, but nobody seems to know. More people kept arriving. Women holding little babies, kids on bikes, a man taking pictures, men from the Marshfield Water Department. The water was going down Acorn Street that turned everything muddy. Then some men showed up with fancy uniforms and not smiling eyes. Soldiers. They were set up uh, a barricade and sealed off the street. This forced all the cars to turn around, even people <clears throat> excuse me, who lived on Acorn Street. I wanted to stay and watch all the action, but the soldiers made us go home. The whole thing was pretty exciting, and it made me realize that there was a whole world out there immense and dangerous beyond the cozy world I knew on Acorn Street. We never did find out what happened. The one night I dreamed that it was the Pope who fell out of heaven and punched a hole in Pratt's lawn. So, boys and girls, 
as we go back and we think about what type of structure this writer used, was it snapshot structure, series of events, or circle structure? So I want you to take this time to think about that. And as you're writing, go back to those three ideas and decide on which best fits your writing style.